you're listening to Burst Your Bubble. I'm Josh, and I have Griffin and Kyler here today. Kyler is back. We are here to deliver the sharpest sports takes. This is it. Football is back on TV this weekend, and it will be actual football, not preseason, not fake. Real football will be on TV this weekend. On this episode, we give our NFL regular season awards. We break down the NFC Beast or the NFC East. We preview college football that's coming on this weekend and a whole lot more. Remember to rate, review, share the podcast with your friends, your family, the lady at Starbucks, guy at McDonald's, tell everyone about Burst Your Bubble. It's fancy football season, so make sure that you're following us on all of our socials at, at Burst Your Bubble Podcast or at Sports BYBP and our fancy football expert Shane at Fantasy BYB. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for listening. But remember, no hard feelings because more than likely, one of us will burst your bubble and josh i I take umbrage to what you said i mean uh, real football was played over this past weekend just nobody could fucking watch it because it was on the pac-12 network well yeah i mean whenever i say real football is on real football is on for the entire world to consume everyone in america is going to be consuming football this weekend i mean caleb williams had one of the i mean one of the best opening performances from a presumable no, number one pick that we've seen in a long, long time, and probably 1,500 people watched it on the Pac-12 network. It's not every day that an accidental fumbled snap goes for a 76-yard touchdown, the <laughs> longest of your career. Incredible stuff. But uh, weekend recap, I meant Flava Flav. I uh, I will stake the claim here. I met Flava Flav first, but I think Caller had a more intimate experience meeting Flava Flav. So I'll walk in the back of the media center. I'm at top. Where, I'm at where are you top, at? Yeah. I'm at the top rank event at, at the Hard Rock. They did a phenomenal job. Shout out Katie. She got us in. She got me in there. She, Josh, she could have got you in there. Griffin, she could have got you in there. Um, there were a few, a few empty seats in the media media section. But uh, so I step back to go to the bathroom, and I'll see Flava Flav and Layla Ali just standing there by themselves. And I was like, holy shit! I walked straight up to Layla Ali. I said, "You're a legend." Then looked straight at Flavor Flav, code switched, and was like, Flavor Flav! <laughs> Gave him a big dap up. And he's like, my brother, my brother. He, he, said, Let, uh, he said, let's take a picture. I said, let's take a picture, one of the two. But then I remember him saying this. He said, and I remember not telling Josh this, and I remembered it. He said, my brother, don't smile. You've been here before. Took the picture. But one of the coldest lines I've ever heard. Flavor Flav lives up to the hype. I don't think he was quite all there. He was really excited for Nico Ollie Walsh, who ended up not getting the win. But I mean, meeting Flavor Flav, it's a win in my book. Griffin, have you ever met Flavor Flav? I have not. Oh, dude, you're missing out. He is a uh, he's a heck of a time. He never goes anywhere without the chain. Uh, it is a uh, it is an icon to see. For those of you who don't know, Flava Flav is the godfather of Muhammad Ali's grandson. One of his grand yeah, one of his grandsons. Yeah, one of the grandsons, Nico <laughs> Ali Walsh, who Kyler just alluded to, just lost for the first time in his professional boxing career at a decision. Uh, more weekend, guy. more weekend recap. Kyler came to Tulsa. It was a uh, episode of Kyler comes to Tulsa. We I took him to one of the premier golf destinations in all of Tulsa we went and played Mohawk Park for those of you who ran here you know how good of a course that is Griffin smiling he knows how good of a course it is uh okay. Keller did he did take us to the cleaners we had Shane with us shout out Shane and then we had longtime listener Schroeder out on the golf course it was a beautiful day beautiful weather we got up early for a 7 a.m tea time yeah. Keller what'd you think of the round I definitely did beat everyone's ass uh, but I would say I had by far the best day. But the Schroeder, I mean, Schroeder, an absolute beauty of a partner. I mean, he helped me, and every time I needed it, we it was just copacetic. It was from the from the moment that that you or Shane decided to split up the cart. So, I mean, you usually go with your partner, whoever you're in the cart with. That's who your partner's with. One of y'all decided, oh, you know what? Fuck this guy I'm riding with. I'm gonna switch it up. I felt the I felt the energy right then with Schroeder, and I think he had the second best day out there on the course. If I'm being honest with you, so I take it you guys won. Oh, by a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't know by a lot, but they did probably end up winning the day. No, well, the problem is Kyler didn't take score for the first nine, so uh, we really don't well, know I mean, who was driving. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was a great day out on the course. Uh, glad that Kyler got to come up to Tulsa, got to see the new house. 
Uh, the other thing I'll ask Kyler a little bit for the pod too, so that we ever get the reaction. Obviously, I'm, I'm. I've told you guys I'm doing 75 hard. Today was 21 days, three weeks of 75 hard, no alcohol, doing the two workouts, all the stuff. Kyler, what was it like being with Becca and myself going through this 75 hard? I don't think you really liked my meal choices. No, I don't think. Not. I don't think you really liked that I wasn't drinking no. alcohol. No, I got home from the fights and I was literally so fucking hungry. And Josh was like, I've got these turkey burgers. And it's like, uh, uh, okay, do you have like six of them? I'd like, I'd like, so like a lot of those. Like, no, I got one. You can have a piece of cheese with it. I'm like, all right, I guess the cheese is going to hold you over. And then I was like, and so then these like we got a 7 a.m. tea time. I'm like, bro, I, I got, also made tater tots. I'm like, bro, we've got to stop and get breakfast. Like we have to. Like I'm I'm gonna die on that golf course. I'm so hungry. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely needed you some boozing out there on the course with us about 8 30 in the morning. I mean, like, it's the old saying, Josh, and you can't drink all day. So that night, that night, <laughs> Griffin Keller tells me we gotta stop and get some breakfast in the morning. I said, Well, how about at a quick trip? Cause I knew that I was going to either need an energy drink or some gum or some gas or something. I was going to need to go by a gas station. He's like, yeah, yeah, that'll work. He's like, what do they got? So I tell him what they have. He goes, okay, that'll work. Well, that morning, whenever I'm up getting ready for the tea time, Kyler comes into the kitchen and I'm eating my pre, my, it's usually my pre-workout breakfast. I usually start the day with a quest bar and a dill of yogurt. What he comes in as I'm eating this yogurt and he says, what in the fuck are you eating? Well, it's, it's my protein yogurt in the morning. <laughs> And I got roasted for that for the rest of the day. Kyler was well, not. Uh, he was fully... starving by eight forty-five. He's like, oh, it's like he's like, I'm so hungry. I need a turkey sandwich from the pro shop. But it's like, yeah, because you didn't eat any fucking breakfast. You yeah, ate you had that? yogurt. You had a probiotic. I also <laughs> didn't eat at the course, so. Okay, respect, respect. Uh, I, I, I also like... ran seven miles on Sunday while Kyler took a nap. Took after a nap. after uh, we I mean, played golf, one of the best golf naps of the season, if we're being honest. So let's talk about the the pre nap, Kyler. We got we Ooh. were sitting on the couch. We got to watch your favorite sport, I think, in all the history. So LLWS, so, Little League World <laughs> Series. Who did I say was going to win it? I mean, Griffin, do you remember? Curacao. So who was in the who was in the championship game? Curacao versus California. Bottom of the sixth. The home run leader of the tournament, up to bat against a team that hasn't allowed a home run all tournament. Moonshot. Callie walks it off, and that 12-year-old has now peaked in life. That's not I'm, good. I may or may not have yelled, he's getting <laughs> laid. And then Callie said, that kid's 11. I said, oh, that's probably a good point. I mean, we'll leave it at that, but he's probably peaked in life. Did you what, watch any of better? the Little League World Series, Griff? I did not. No, but like for real, though, like – if you walked off, hit a walk-off home run to win the Little League World Series on, on ESPN, what moment in life could be better? And I've had a kid and been married. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I would just hate to think that I peaked at 12 years old. Maybe when you do that in high school or college or in the pros. Or the when you hit, yeah. Yeah, when you hit one of those levels. I don't know. I will say you're winning for an entire state, which is pretty cool. And you were the home run leader of the entire thing. It was a very cool thing for that kid. Uh, what was also cool was we changed the channel at one point and started watching golf. And then we went in, there was 2 0. Callie was up in like the bottom of the sec and they were up to bat. And then whenever we turned the TV back on, it was five to five. And we were like, what the hell? We missed everything. So, That's Little, League. Little League World Series was fun to watch at the time. Let's, I'm still not as crazy about it as Kyler is, nah, but <laughs> you'll be all in next next season. Whenever they're whenever we're able to bat, you'll be all in. Let's just talk about Jeremiah for a minute. Can we? Yeah. I he mean, won. Another win that leaves room for nitpicking, but another win nonetheless. Moves to eleven and zero, but his last four fights have ended with the decision um following those two spectacular knockouts. So what's next for Jeremiah? Um so do we? Uh, it's uh, Josh. It's apparent they're giving him cans, and he's outboxing them to a decision. So at what point do they give him an, a real prospect, someone that can really test his boxing, make him go in there and hunt the finish to uh, actually have the chance to win the fight instead of just hunting out his, a decision, which it honestly seems like he's doing. 
Well, I mean, it's going to have to happen sooner rather than later for top rank because I think that they want to know what kind of boxer he is, but at the same time, they're getting the record up. I mean, we talked about this whenever we first started covering Jeremiah of how the boxing world gets people to 15, 16, and 0, and then they start giving you real competition. I mean, we we did a breakdown of this. We talked well, about it. Uh, and I'll stop you. I, I, that's a great point. But, Josh, we, we we were also talking about that when that man was 26 years old. He's now 29, on about, about to turn 30. And now he's 11 and 0 instead of 16 and 0. Like, well, that's kind of how we thought he was going to be. Well, I mean, if it if it doesn't happen in the next couple of fights, I'll be surprised. Um, me too. Like, me too. Okay. I think he's I think he's up there with the top heavyweights in the. I think he's one of the most technically sound heavyweights in the world. Now, does he have the does he have the power of a Deontay Wilder? I don't fucking know, but I'll, I'd like to find out. I will say it looked like he did at one point. And he, and he probably yeah. still does. I mean, Jeremiah is a he's a tank of a man who hits very hard. And everything is so technical. It's just so technically perfect. And like, and I think that you told me this whenever you guys were talking, or it might have been speculation, but you know, it's one of those things. Would you rather be eleven and zero with four decisions, or would you rather be ten and one where you got caught with a left hook and a counter and you got knocked out? Yeah, especially in the heavyweight division. So it's kind of one of those lines of like he's doing a very good job of controlling every fight that he's in and just making sure he gets an easy win. And He's he's not having to finish people, and I'll just say an inside source, the top rank guy, did talk to. They said any card that they're in Tulsa, to Jeremiah, they 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 hope to have Jeremiah Milton on. Yeah, they'd be dumb not to. That man sells seats. He does. He it's apparent if you're if you are in the in the arena, it's very apparent that people are there for Jeremiah Milton. So more weekend recap, Griffin. Did you watch any of the PGA over the weekend? Ooh. Um, I watched a little bit of it. I actually didn't get to watch sports as much as I was hoping I was going to be able to this weekend. Um, I watched a little bit of college football, watched a little bit of golf. Um, but like I said, not a ton. Uh, I did see that Victor Hovland did take home $18 million, which is nice. Congrats to him. He's been playing million. hot here recently. Is 20 it 21? Million. No, 21 in eight days. Cause he went back. Oh, back gotcha. to yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, he's on a heater right now. And I honestly, I really like that for him. I yeah, that, that was fun. Hey, go pokes. That's what I'm talking. He didn't go. He did not go to mm-hmm. OU. <laughs> Kyle, share your uh, your nap story about Victor oh, Hoffman. So, uh, I mean, I obviously I needed that nap just very badly. Just got. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest here. Shane just peer pressured me, and they were drinking on the golf course, and I'm at 8:30 that morning, and so you know it, it was definitely time for a nap that afternoon. Uh, went to sleep with Victor having a six shot lead. I woke up, he had a three shot lead on like cold 12. I was like, Oh no, he might, he might be kind of choking this away. Woke back up. He was holding up the trophy. I was like, okay, perfect. And then, uh, woke back up at seven 30. Uh, so it took about a three, three and a half hour nap. Um, woke up and got some Whataburger, uh, cause Josh definitely did not have anything to make a hamburger with. I played yeah, a turkey burger, hamburger. but Victor Hovland just on an absolute tear. It was fun watching some big names uh, on Sunday that were all kind of, I mean, you, I can't say battling it out because they weren't battling, but just some big names at the top of the leaderboard. Victor Hovland, uh, Xander Shoffle, Colin Morikawa, Rory McIlroy. I mean, all the big names were out there at the top. So that was super exciting to see. Well, it's the thing, Josh, they were battling. It's just, it, I mean, Victor Hovland started with, with the lead. It's like, man. I, I I know we complain about it every year, but I mean it's it's ridiculous. I understand you know he's only two shots ahead of second place, but it's like he's eight shots ahead of eighth place. So it's like it's weird. Yeah, I don't know that we've ever talked about it with Griffin on here. Griffin, what are your thoughts on them doing the the Cal? You might have to explain it again. Griffin will probably know what you're talking about. Yeah, they started the tournament up with Victor Holland started at ten under. Say that again. They start the tournament um, at so first place starts at ten under, second place starts at eight under, six, third at six. I mean the, I don't know. I I do like them all starting at the same thing, but at the same time, I mean he also deserved it, you know. Yeah, it's also a golf tournament, though. Yeah, I mean I would probably prefer if they all just started at even and went from there. 
yeah, it's just a weird, it's just a weird wrinkle that they throw in. I don't like uh, it. for these numbers. So to me, it wasn't really even. No one was ever battling at any point for this. So that's my that's my frustration. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's going to be most years, I think, too. Yeah. Well, that's really all of the uh, weekend recap that I have. Unless y'all oh, have man. anything extra. Week zero. I mean, uh, I, I did. I wasn't on the show last week, and I so I won't even I won't even count this as a as a official pick. But I should be one and zero for the year because I I had Notre Dame uh, minus twenty one and and a half or minus one it was very convenient how we got that uh one and oh text after the game was over i'm just saying that <laughs> very true um oh actually before we forget i want to talk about this because we haven't done it and we have not talked about any like uh, anyway the blind side so obviously michael or you know he's comes out years ago and was not happy with the movie didn't portray him right Obviously, there were exaggerations in the movie, like he had never slept in a bed before he got to their house, blah, 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 blah. So obviously, there were things wrong. The question that I want to ask you guys, and I have my a strong opinion about this, but one of the biggest takes I saw, one of the biggest questions going around about this was, should Sandra Bullock have to give up her Oscar <laughs> if, he, like, if he wins this case? Absolutely so, not. Embrace no. the pace. <laughs> but, uh, no but way. Think- I think what what's the guy's name? Is it Tim McGraw? It is Tim McGraw. I think he should. I think he should have to pay all the reparations. Why not Sandra Bullock? Because <laughs> <laughs> Tim McGraw has killed people. What? No <laughs> doubt. That man is crazy. Um, I'm in the same camp as you guys. Very strong opinion that she should not be giving up the Oscar for uh, <laughs> for this no movie. way. Because it's not like she was. Uh, you know the lady who was doing all the stuff allegedly so like that's definitely a great not. movie story it was very, very entertaining movie yeah but i just wanted to bring that up uh because that was one of the it's, more highly debated things and it's fucked so, up it like man the wars and i'll let you go ahead because you probably read up more out of me but the wars have vehemently vehemently denied all these accusations yeah, no, they definitely have. And they acted like they he actually has received some money from all of this. But I was actually going to kind of take it in a different direction um, regarding sports, um, not necessarily a movie, but films. So you guys have seen the Johnny Manziel Untold, right? Love yep. It. Okay. Is he going to get his Heisman stripped for doing, for nope. outwardly talking about all this illegal stuff that he was doing, yet Reggie Bush, who did less than him, literally got his Heisman stripped. No, because he did it all after winning the Heisman. Hmm. I guess saw that's a, fair. I saw a Twitter comment that said that. Guess that's fair. Yeah. That is a great I, although, question. Although Reggie should get that Heisman. Uh, yeah, that's just I agree. Fucked up. Did y'all I watch agree. the Florida one? The Florida Untold? Yeah. Heard no. it was really bad. Heard they left as far out as a lot what? of stuff. They left, yeah. they left, yeah, it's just a lot of stuff that, it wasn't bad, but it was just the stuff that was left out, it was apparent. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Cam still in the laptops, uh, it was that whole Aaron Hernandez thing, I mean, it was, it was, it was kind of a weird thing. It was, it was a whole list of things they left out. Aaron Hernandez. I'm forever. Um, all right, let's get, oh, some more sports before we get into NFL stuff. Uh, it's probably up now since the last time I saw it, but the last stat I saw was Lionel Messi seven or ten goals, seven games. So is he too good for MLS or is the MLS too bad for Messi? It's probably a little bit of both, to be honest. But I love it for the MLS. It gets people watching the MLS. It gets other stars um from Europe wanting to come over, um, hopefully. And so, you know, and the thing is, is it's kind of cool um, that, I mean, we're going to see these players retire like Zlatan did it, David Beckham did it, you know, players like that, that are hopefully we can start getting them a little bit um, earlier in their careers versus the tail end. But it's still pretty cool that they're over here in the United States playing. Absolutely. And so I agree with you. It is it is a mixture of both. Uh, I think Messi is that much better and that we are that much worse. Um, but it's also really so they're playing pretty much the equivalent of the NBA, the NBA's midseason tournament of what the what they're trying to do, right? That's what yep. they're doing right now, the US yeah. Open Cup. So when is that mm-hmm. final? 
because that was the semifinals that he that he had that that amazing one of the best passes I've ever seen. I mean, that was uh, better than that was better than I'm, his pass in the World Cup. I'm pretty sure they already won it, didn't they? Yeah, I was thinking he that scored, they did win it. He scored the go ahead goal for the win for the championship. Well, I know that pass that he had was for the semis. Yeah, no, I'm talking about the goal. Messi won the championship. Another winner. No, not surprising at all. Yeah, so That's just super fun to watch. I think it's really good for MLS. I think it's uh I think I think one of the best things that come out was that there was an article that came out where he was in talks to originally go to Pittsburgh and play in Pittsburgh. Really? And then Miami like came out and decided to pay him like a lot more money. But the fact that he was willing to come to Pittsburgh to play, not just Miami, means that there's might be more of a market for MLS for some of these foreign players. Bro, I mean, Pittsburgh, isn't he part owner though with Miami as well? Pittsburgh yes. was about to give him that entire yeah. team. They yeah. should. <laughs> they were. I guarantee they were. I guarantee that's what the deal was. You own the team. Yeah, it was a 10-9 penalty shootout where Inter Miami beat Nashville SC in a thrilling League Cup final. After a 1-1 tie was settled by a marathon 10-9 penalty shootout as Lionel Messi extended his winning streak since joining the MLS yeah, side I, to seven games. I was just going to say, I don't think he... What? So he's lost the games since he's been in the MLS? Yes, no, his he current win streak is seven. No, 10 games. No, 10 he's wins. not lost the game. Seven yeah. games. He yeah, no. yeah, he's not lost the game. So yeah, Messi on fire. Jesus Christ. I mean, what did you expect? All right, before we start talking about the NFL, because we've got a lot of NFL stuff for this episode, make sure that you're following us on social medias. On Twitter, we're at sport on X. We are at Sports BYBP. I am at Jake Eatno22. Kyler's at Kyler012. Griffin is at Griffin Argo1. Make sure you follow our fantasy football expert Shane at Fantasy BYB. Go check out for all the content that we're putting out for fantasy football season. And we're gonna start putting up our picks, updating our fantasy rankings. If you've not seen our rank preseason rankings for fantasy football, go check those out. They are linked on all of our socials right now. Make sure you're checking those out, using them as a as a draft kit, as a tool for your top 25 in certain positions, top 15 in tight ends, all PPR. We don't mess with any of the standard stuff. Go follow every, all of us on social media. Go follow our podcast page on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, everywhere else at Burster Bubble Podcast. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you so much for listening. But remember, no hard feelings, because more than likely, one of us will burst your bubble. All right, boys, what do, we do, what do we want to do next? We've got three – this is going to be another – I mean, football's back. So we've got three segments. We've got top ten fantasy tight ends. We've got the NFL regular season award predictions. Or we can break down the NFC East. What say you, Josh? I say that we should start with the fantasy tight ends because I think that is going to be the easiest thing for us to nail down since we already have our list and there's uh, only so many good tight ends in the NFL. Yeah, like five. <laughs> wow. Okay, just, just roasting the tight ends before we even get started. I can't name more than five. Sorry, that's, we can just do a top five. <laughs> there we go. I, I just don't feel like that's true because I feel like you could probably name thirty-two starting tight ends. Do you think I? That's a. We don't have to get into five. that. <laughs> <laughs> I have so I, so I have a list of thirteen. I guarantee you, I could not name fifteen. You have a list of <laughs> Yeah, 14. you literally have 15. Yeah, 14, but yeah. 14. We all have 14. Well, I'm, I'm not on that list pulled up. Well, that's the <laughs> list we're going I'm not going to lie. I it's had to modify mine uh, already because yeah. I noticed that I forgot Evan Ingram. Okay, then I'm going to modify mine based on this episode. This is the wildest thing I've ever been a part of. Because I'm going strictly <laughs> off vibes on this. Because the last one, y'all just Off made vibes? Me... Yeah, I mean, this is... But who I think was going to vibe best on on my fantasy team this year? Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do with the rankings, like that we have on the sheet <laughs> that we gave to everyone to look at. Yeah, that was that felt like homework. Okay, I'm gonna go first <laughs> at ten. Is that okay? Can I do that? I guess. Sure. All right, I'm gonna go first. Okay. At number ten, I have David Njoku. Playing with Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson with the full season coming back. Uh, it's not a ton of weapons. Obviously, Nick Chubb is still here, so you're going to have to be able to make plays. You've got Amari Cooper, you've got Elijah Moore, and you've got David Njoku. 
And I think David Njoku is going to be recipient of a lot of red zone targets. And he has a opportunity to score a lot. I think a top 10 tight end season is going to be great, great for him. I also have Njoku there. Uh, and do you have any argument for Dalton Schultz? Oh, um, I have, we both, oh, have, we, we both have Dalton Schultz at 12. Okay. I'm just saying there's arguments there for him for him in the top ten. Who is your there ten? is there there is there is arguments there, but uh you actually have Cole Komet. <laughs> Cole Komet, I think he's gonna have a great season as well. Here's I don't doubt season. that. Uh I have Evan Ingram at number 10. Uh like I said, I had to kind of <laughs> modify my list because I forgot that uh well, I didn't I did kind of forget about him. But I mean Honestly, I think he's going to kind of – I think he was tied in number five last year at the end of the season, and I don't think that that's going to be the same with Calvin Ridley coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, Very well could be better than number 10, but that's kind of where I have him just because I think there is going to be a lack of opportunity. I think they're going to target Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk a lot, and so um, that's just kind of where I see him kind of falling to. I'll go ahead and jump to nine. I've got Evan Ingram at nine. So I think I think exactly what you just said. Just I'm in I'm in lockstep with you. I think just he's in, he's in that range all year long. I yeah. also it's, have Evan Ingram here because of everything that Griffin just said. I think it's going to be a good year. I mean, he was used a lot last year when it was just Kirk. So obviously Ridley's going to take some of the targets, but I still think Evan Ingram, such a big body, building that rapport last year with Trevor Lawrence, is gonna it's gonna translate into some touchdowns. I'm excited yeah. for Ridley. Oh, dude, I am too. But that's not what this is about. At number nine, I have David Njoku. Um, so the, he and he did actually finish at number ten last year. Um, I just think Deshaun Watson had a god awful season last year, and so I think he's going to rely on kind of some underneath stuff and more on the tight ends. And outside of Amari Cooper, you could argue that Njoku is his next best target. Um, and so I kind of see him taking a little bit of a step forward. Njoku. So uh, yeah, I've got. Uh, I, I... Uh, what number are we on? Sorry, boys. Becca was asking me eight. about my incredible golf game today. Uh, at eight, that is where I have. This is gonna be a maybe a surprise for some of you. That's where I have Kyle Pitts. And I, I uh, had him dropping. I didn't know it would be eight. Yeah, I see. I'm not. So here's the problem. They ran the ball 539 times, as we know from Griffin earlier this year. They have Drake London, who's a terrific pass catcher. Desmond Ritter is starting, so he's not going to be throwing the ball that much. Kyle Pitts is a great talent, but is it going to translate to actual work in fantasy football? I just don't think so. I don't think they're going to throw enough times. I don't think the points are going to be scored enough by anyone other than B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier to really make up that much of a difference. So still, I mean, top eight is not a bad fantasy year, but eight is where I think he's going to end up. That's also where I have uh, Kyle Pitts, and the the reason being is because, I mean, you kind of said it, Bajon Robinson I think is going to take a lot of the um, kind of short underneath stuff where Kyle Pitts, um, I mean, he was on pace to have over 100 targets last year, so that would be the argument for him to be higher, but he also um, only caught about half of those targets, so that's not great, and uh, I mean, he only played 10 games, and I just am not a huge Kyle Pitts believer. Who was throwing to him, though? Desmond same Anderson, guy, same, same guy that's gonna be thrown this year. Saying. So I mean, the, we, we, maybe we've improved a little bit at the QB position, just a little bit, a little more accurate throws. Because I think if it's a if it's a decent throw, I think Kyle Pitts has the ability to come down with those and having have, an, have a, a decent year. I mean, a top. I mean, I've got him a little higher than that, so we'll get to that later. Um, we're at number eight. Yep. Mooth, Pat Fryermuth. I think he's going to be steady all year long. I think he's going to be a, a reliable target all year long. Kenny Pickett's going to a, it's a safety blanket. Number eight. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> where to have him at? Uh, you have him at six. six. Okay. He dropped a little bit, which is okay. Uh, Shane had Friar Muth at eight as well. He did. So who starts at seven? Well, I will. I have Dallas Goddard, and this could be um kind of low Ooh, for him. Yeah, no, I know, I know, but um, I mean, last year he only played twelve games. He finishes the twelve tight end, um, which 
given that is probably because he also played 12 games. So, um, but I mean, the thing is, is the Eagles have a great offense. He could definitely end up being a top five tight end. They like to pass a lot um, along with kind of throwing some shorter stuff too. I just think AJ Brown's going to have a great season along with Devontae Smith. I think they're going to both take another step forward. So I think ultimately it's going to mean less targets for Dallas Goddard, but I could definitely see the argument for a top, for him being top five, if that's where you have him. So, I mean, number seven, I mean, Josh, you say that's a hot take. I said, I'm reading number four here, ESPN analysts that have Dallas Goddard as a number seven tight end of the year, along with myself. I also have him number seven. There you go. Maybe it was just a hot take to me. Maybe I'm a, a cold take having him where I do, but <laughs> I, he's just such a talented tight end. He always gets open when he's on the field. I haven't, I mean, I'm going into this thinking that he's going to be fully healthy. He just finds ways to get targets. So I'll talk about him more later on. Kyler, Kyler agrees he has him at seven. At seven, that's where I have baby Gronk, Pat Fryermuth. I mean, it, he's just, he all, once again, he finds ways to get open. He's big as hell. He's tough. I mean, he just finds ways to make it happen. With George Pickens, you know, being George Pickens, Nas, he's still going to run the ball. They're going to have to throw to someone other than Pickens and Deontay, and I think Pat's going to step right in and take that role. It's going to be a very solid tight end for a long time in the league. It seems like big third downs, big plays, big in the red zone, big touchdown situation. seems like Muth really finds, like you said, finds a way. He finds a way to make it happen, make a play really help out, especially then a rookie, but now coming into a second year, pick it. Yeah, yep. I love it. For and, Kenny. Yeah, and uh, that's actually why I have Pat at number six. For everything you guys just said, I just think he's going to be more ingratiated into the offense. I think he's going to have a bigger role. Um, again, with Kenny Pickett progressing another year, being more comfortable in the offense, I think they're going to use him a lot. Um, and so I think he – I mean, he's number six for me. We saying the Steelers are going to win this division. <laughs> <laughs> we already did that breakdown that we had them at uh, dead last. <laughs> no, sounds like we're sounds like Kenny Pickett might be MVP. Kenny <laughs> Two Gloves stop. is not MVP, but he's <laughs> he is Pat Fryermuth's MVP. Pat Fryermuth might be <laughs> Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, number six for me is Darren Waller. Darren Waller wow. joins the New York Giants and Danny Dimes, and they're going to have to throw the ball to somebody. Somebody in the offense has to catch it, and they don't have any premier pass catchers. And so I think, except for Darren Waller, I mean, Darren Waller was that guy in Las Vegas. He even he, he was that last year for Derek Carr over there. I mean, he, uh, I mean, he's just fills those gaps. He 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 makes it happen. He's a pass catching machine. He's going to have a ton of receptions. It's going to boost him to a top six fantasy year, even with Daniel Jones at quarterback. I'm excited to see Daniel Jones with someone who can actually catch a football. And so I think that's why I propped him into top six for me. I mean, I've got Kyle Pitts here. Kyle Pitts is, I think, everything I said earlier about, about Kyle Pitts and Desmond Ritter, I think just another year of experience. And, I mean, it, we'll see what happens at quarterback there. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll, I don't know who's the backup. I'm not even Taylor Heineke. G fucking fantastic. What are we talking <laughs> about here? If he, gets, if he gets in the game, Kim and Kyle Pitts are, are Kyle Pitts is a top five tight end if if Taylor Heineke starting those games. Taylor Heineke over Desmond Ritter. Heard it here first. What? Are you kidding me? Are you are you serious? Are you, like, do you not agree with that? I don't know that I disagree with it, but uh <laughs> I mean, you know something that the Atlanta coaches do not. Fucking, I know T Taylor Heineke is a winner. I mean, he's a, he's a he's gonna <laughs> do everything. He's gonna try to win. I I like Kyle Pitts a lot this year, though. Go ahead, Griff. Um, I think it's my let's turn. Let's see. Yeah, it is. Uh, my fifth pick. We're getting into the top five here, and this is a conversation I'm going to love to have with Kyler because he, he someone in his top five is getting left out. And I just don't know who it's going to be. No, and so I'm so excited. Uh, so number five, I mean, it's still someone's going to get left out some, from somewhere on this list. Uh, number five for me is George Kittle. Me too. George Kittle, week in and week out, is going to be a top tier tight end as long as he can stay healthy, stay on the field. Brock Purdy, the starter, is going to be throwing dimes to Kittle. Kittle's going to block. Kittle's going to play hard, physical. 
I just think it's every, this offense has all the seeds to just blossom under Kyle Shanahan again. No reason George Kittle can't be a top five fantasy tight end. Always has the ability to break into the top three, but I think five is a safe landing spot. I think what you just said there is exactly right. And I think there's a real chance that a year like this, where he's kind of getting older, you know what I mean? Like he's been blocking for a lot of years now. There's a chance that one of these years, he's going to become just a pass catching tight end more so than a blocking tight end. And there's a chance he breaks into the top three and that might be this year, but I also have the number five. Yep. That's exactly where I have him. And honestly, that's probably pretty low. Um, he's only finished outside of the top three, like two seasons out of his six seasons. So, um, I really, really wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being a top three, um, tied in, especially with the fact that Brock Purdy seemed to love throwing him the ball. The only reason why I don't have him higher is actually because of all the weapons they have outside of him, along with Christian McCaffrey and everything in the backfield. I just, um, that's why I have him at number five. Love that. All right. Number four. Who you got? I got Darren Waller. I think everything Josh said earlier, I mean, they got to throw the ball to somebody, and Darren Waller is an is a established pass catcher, and he's and he's going to be in that short to mid-range throws where Daniel Jones thrives at, especially on the run, so that's going to be all, all the more all the, all the more welcome for the Giants, and I think they're definitely going to need that. They could win some games doing that. Exactly. That's why I have him at number four as well. Um, the only thing that does scare me is his um, injury history. He, I think he's been banged up the last three seasons. I don't even know. Like if he, I don't even think he played. Yeah, I don't even think he played ten games last year. Um, so that is kind of concerning. But I mean, he is their only target. He's it. Like they they don't have anybody else. So um, I just I think this is going to be barring injury. I think he can. He's going to have a really great season. Well, that's it. Who you got, Josh? At number four, yep. this is where I have Dallas Goddard. So yep. this is where I think that, uh, I mean, once again, him and Jalen Hurts' rapport together is just so good. Dallas Goddard took over the, the spot from Zach Hurts a few years ago. I mean, they have such good chemistry. Whenever everyone's trying to double team A.J. Brown and, and Devontae Smith and put a spy up there, he's going to be running across the middle and he's going to be open. He's going to catch balls. I just I see no way he doesn't have a top five fantasy finish this year. So. Put, I'm all in on Dallas Goddard. Bet he doesn't. What's the bet? 20 bucks. Tattoo bet. 20 bucks. All right, we're in. Dallas Goddard right, finishes. Write it, it down. Uh, fully healthy season. No, okay. No, no, That's... listen, you got you got to get a tattoo of the state of Texas with, with like, Dallas. <laughs> well, ta- well, Texas has nothing to do with the bet. <laughs> His name's Dallas. <laughs> what? His name's Dallas. No, I'd rather have a tattoo of an eagle. I wouldn't. That's than, the, than the state of Texas? You'd okay, rather have the state of Texas either. tattooed <laughs> on I'd rather, have an eagle. Eagle. I'd rather have an eagle. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Get Fort Worth drawn in your arm? What's, I mean, what's going <laughs> Billy on? Billy Bob's across your chest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number oh. three. Who's going? TJ Hawkinson. TJ Hawkinson at number three. Yeah, I think I love it. Him and, him and Kirk Cousins have a fantastic year. Kirk Cousins might be, Kirk, I mean, it, the mustache is questionable, huh? I love it. <laughs> I love he, it. All he was missing was the chain. He's look. He's trying to look like a Viking is the plan. Do you think he comes out week one with that? No. With the mustache? Yeah. Oh, no. I do. I do. He's not. No, he's not. <laughs> I'll bet no, you $5 dollars he comes out with a mustache. All right, bet. <laughs> okay. This is a betting episode. I love this. All right, let's get to bet. I also have uh, TJ Hawkinson at three. I think it's just going to make too much sense. Uh, Jordan Addison is going to be there, but so many vacated targets in the offense. Justin Jefferson is going to get his. He's going to get double team, triple team probably. It's going to leave someone like TJ Hawkinson open. He's going to be able to catch those passes. Jordan Addison and Osborne on the other sides are going to be able to spread things out a little bit. But just how dominant he has been over the past couple of years, it, it makes no sense for him to finish outside the top three in offense that loves the pass to football. Yep, I agree. He um, he was having a great season with the Lions, and he got traded to the Vikings and um, somehow was even better. So I just think they're going to build on that going into this season. Um, you did say that they do have Jordan Addison, but I don't think it's going to take that much – away from tj hawkinson and so um yeah i mean i think he's guaranteed a top three tight end this year 
everything you guys said. And I, I was very excited when when he got traded to the to the Vikings midseason. I was I was excited for him, and I was excited for the Vikings. I thought I thought it was the piece that that would put them over the top, and it almost did. Okay, number two, Mark Andrews. I mean, he's he's Lamar's favorite target by far. He's his security blanket. Obviously, he's got OBJ there. He's got uh, Rashad Bateman. He's got uh, Zay Flowers. But we'll see. I think Mark Andrews will still be the 8 to 12 targets per game easily. So what's wild about Mark Andrews is he has a good chance to take over as tied in one on the year. No, I mean, he doesn't. He does have – No, he doesn't. He does have the ability to do that. That's the kind of player that he is whenever he – him and Lamar are both playing full seasons healthy – he absolutely has. He gets the targets. He gets the work. Um, but here's what you can get. You can get 90% of Travis Kelsey in the third round of fantasy football leagues versus having to draft Kelsey at the 1-6. So, so you can get Mark Andrews in the middle of the third and still get 90% of the output. Not so, Now you can't. I, I, I don't like fantasy football, and I'm not very good at it. When should I draft a tight end? So it all depends on if you can get – like Travis Kelsey, you have to take him by one eight, or he's gonna. I mean, if you get him past one, if you get him past one seven, it's great value. Um, but if you don't get him, Mark Andrews in the middle of the third is okay to take. Past that, I tend to punt till the fifth, sixth, seventh round, depending on who's there for value. Yep. Um, so trivia question. I, I did not come up with the stat, I heard it on a podcast I listened to. Shout out fantasy footballers. Can I and actually I've already told one of y'all this so once I, I it think was it was, me. Okay, Griffin, you can't answer. Pretty sure. Actually, I think I've asked both of y'all this, but now I have now I have other stats to go along with it. For the listeners, Mark Andrews for his entire career has 27 pass block routes run. Just wild. Do you know That's how many sad. pass block routes he ran last season? One. One pass blocking right according to PFF. And I did find this for you, Kyler. In 2022, Travis Kelsey and George Kittle both had 38 snaps where they were used to pass block. They were using more than one season than, than Mark Andrews has done in his entire career when it comes to pass blocking. This is a guy who's going out, running routes, catching the football, and that's what he's doing. And he's doing a really good job of it. So if you want a cheaper Travis Kelsey, buy Mark Andrews the beginning of the third, middle of the third. Too bad he doesn't have a quarterback to get him the ball. Too bad he's probably going to have an MVP throwing him the ball. <laughs> All right, Griff, go ahead and talk good about Travis Kelsey. I mean, there's not much to be said. He is uh, arguably the best target in the league that a quarterback could have. Um, this is a guy that I don't understand why defenses do not guard him. It, I mean, it makes no sense. He's always open. Um, he's, I mean, you talk about route running for a tight end it's just it's the thing is is he is a mismatch no matter who you put on him he's too big for corners and safeties yet he's too fast for linebackers I mean it's really just a mismatch nightmare so um I think and I mean on top of that he is the clear-cut number one for the Chiefs and there's really not um, we don't even know who the second guy is going to be is it Kadarius Tony? is this guy Moore um is it going to be Rasheed Rice? Is it going to be, you never know, Justin Ross might pop off. I don't know. Yeah. But either way, he is the guy. And um, him and Patrick Mahomes are arguably the best duo in the league. And so, arguable, arguably. huh? I don't know. I don't know what who you're arguing with. I'm sure Josh would have something to say about Mahomes. He and likes to be a contrarian. Yeah. He's a contrarian. Uh, I mean that's probably right. I mean, th- I mean, I I think right now it'd be hard to beat those two. I think with Mahomes not having very many weapons last year and still leaning on Kelsey, I think that kind of solidifies it. Before then, I wouldn't have really called him and Kelsey a duo just because Tyreek Hill what? was there and getting so much yeah, work. I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, so since Tyreek left, yeah, for sure. So but going before back that, to- I probably like to me what makes sense as a duo would be like Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs because there's not like a just another star over there. So it makes sense now with Mahomes and Kelsey. I'd give you that. Going back to the fantasy aspect of it, what you say, you know, if you get him at 1718, that's a, that's a great pick. What's the highest you take Travis Kelsey? 
I've seen him go as high as like the second, but that's not going to be me. Um, I think one eight is probably the right spot for me to get Kelsey because then I'm not missing on like Bijan or uh, I'm taking probably taking Saquon over Kelsey right now. So you've got Eckler or Jefferson, Eckler, McCaffrey, Chase, Hill, Cup, Bijan. Yeah, eight makes sense. Eight or nine for me. Might just go all wide receivers again. Uh, Also, um, just kind of looking at it, Josh, your Mark Andrews take of him taking over the number one spot, I find pretty far-fetched. Six out of the last seven seasons, Travis Kelsey's been the number one tight end. Yeah, I mean, we also picked Josh Allen to finish four when he's the last. Four yeah, that is true. That, that is true. Two. That so is very think, true. <laughs> records are meant to, to be broken. Same with uh, <laughs> I think Kittle too. Kittle yeah. is always a top three tight end. It seems like. Yeah, it's just injury is what hurts Kittle. But yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're picking stuff on here, Griffin. I hate to burst your bubble, but uh, eventually Travis no, Kelsey's it. not going to be the tight end one. Well, who did I leave off? Eventually, but that's not this year. Time will tell. Who did I leave off? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Cole Komet, maybe? Where'd I have him? <laughs> you had him at 10. Well, I don't think you yeah. actually mentioned Dallas Goddard Which... in your <laughs> in your rank today. No, he did not. That's who you well... left out of your top 10. Yeah, because I had Cole Komet in my top 10. Because I think, I think, uh, I just haven't watched enough Justin Fields highlights for re- recently. Well, this was great. Uh, so our overall tight ends, according to our list that everyone looks at, unless you want to get on there and update your rankings. Right now it is Travis <laughs> Kelsey, Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson, Darren Waller, Dallas Goddard, Pat Fryermuth, Kyle Pitts, George Kittle, David Njoku, and Evan Ingram as our top 10 tight ends for fantasy football. Burst your bubble rankings. With that, boys, let's go ahead and switch over to breaking down the NFC beast. What was last year the best division in football? Fuck Question off. off the top. Will the NFC East be the best division in football in 2023? It wasn't the best last year. It, it was. By winning percentage, it was the best division in all of football. So they're playing it each other. It was historic. It was a historically good division. It was. <laughs> uh, so but... my question off the top, will it be the best division of football in 2023? No. No. No, and uh, my main reason is because they had one of the toughest draws as far as schedules go. I think three of the four teams are a top five hardest schedule in the league this year. Well, what, what was it last year? It was probably super easy. Mm, we can figure that out. That would make that would make some sense to me, just because I mean, it doesn't seem like any of these teams. I mean, I get it. It was the Giants. They they had a great run. They they won. I mean, a lot of games last year. The Cowboys, obviously, they're going to be in the mix with the with the stars that they have. And then all of the Giants, the Eagles went to the fucking Super Bowl. But the Eagles had one of the easiest schedules. They last year. The only good team from that division was the Eagles. It was apparent all year long. Like it was apparent that maybe two maybe two of these teams make it makes it to the playoffs, and that's what happened. Let's see. I mean, I would say that the Giants overachieved last year, but to say that it was not a good football team, I mean, is just wild. I mean, these no, a I'm lot not of these saying they're not a good games. football team. They're a good. The football Eagles team. had the second easiest schedule, and they made it to the Super Bowl. Yeah, but it was easy. <laughs> easy as fuck. <laughs> That's why their win loss was so good. Well. I mean, regardless, they're also I mean, a stacked team. The well, Eagles are a stacked team. Regardless of what the strength of schedule is, these teams still it was a, a historically good division last year. No, yeah, and I'm not arguing that. I do think it's a, a little overstated on how good, um, yeah. like, com- I, I don't think they're actually as good as what that historic season was. Like, I don't expect them to replicate that. Yeah, and I and I think that's fair, but they uh-huh. did. It, uh, you can't call it a, a historic season when one of the teams went ten and seven. Like it's, it's weird. Well, yeah, but it's because of how good all the teams in the division. Yeah, it's not, I mean, all those teams were fighting over winning records. Like For, even yeah. the Commanders were there, almost having a winning record. Like this, yeah, every why? team did really good. Taylor Heineke. It's well. A that, so let's start that with can transition. Four. Yeah, that transitions right to number four. The Washington Commanders for me. 
And now we can talk about the new quarterback, Sam Howell. Howell. Uh, Sam Howell coming out, being named the starter for this football team. Terry McLaurin, Curtis Daniel, Jahan Dotson there, Antonio Gibson, Brian Robinson. The offense, you know, looks like it should take a step forward. They had the Super Bowl victory moment by beating the Ravens and ending the historic preseason record. So, you know, things are looking up. It's not even a crazy feat. Nobody cares are, about the preseason besides the Ravens. It's also a historic record. They that was a record new, that had never been done before. They also Nobody got a new cares. Owner. They also got they, a new owner. They also got rid of Dan Snyder. So they also things, got a new offensive coordinator. A lot of things looking up for Washington, obviously. And they might Honestly, change their name again. Yeah. Um, I think their receiving core might be one of the more underrated ones um, in the league, but unfortunately their quarterback is, um, as you mentioned, Sam Howell, and we don't know what the what that is even going to look like. I'm not going to say I'm confident in him, but I do think their defense will be better this year than ranked middle of the pack because I think they have more talent than being middle of the pack. They were so injured last year. They were so hurt last true. year. It is it's a true. really – especially that defensive front with Montez Sweat – uh, I mean, that whole line, uh, Chase Young over there, I mean, that whole mm-hmm. defensive front is just monstrous. But their offensive yeah. line is horrendous. <laughs> Swiss cheese. Number three. Who you got, Kyler? New York Giants. I think they have, uh, again, I think they have a 9-8 and eight season, 10-8, and 10-7. I think Saquon Barkley earns every bit of his contract. But I, I, they don't make the playoffs to ten and seven. Um, I, I think the Cowboys finish ahead of them. Yeah, I mean, it, what it boils down to me for the Giants is I don't. I think they have the third best uh, quarterback in the division. I also think they have um, the third best roster in the division, if not the fourth best roster. So um, the thing is, is I just think the Eagles and Cowboys have better rosters overall, better quarterbacks, and so I mean, I can't. I can't justify putting the Giants ahead of either of those teams. No, nope, completely agree. I have the Giants at three. Dayball did a really good job helping Daniel Jones last year, but when you look at it for an, another entire season, only having Saquon and Darren Waller as your two main targets. I mean, a lot of people are high on Jalen Hyatt, but I'm just not convinced he's going to be able to fix an offense this bad. I think that they overperformed last year, and I expect them to come down to earth a little bit. I think they're going to regress. I think they have a chance mm-hmm. to lose some of those divisional matchups. So I could I don't see them finishing it like a ten and seven. I probably see more like an eight and nine. Wow. Uh finish probably right under the five hundred mark. But I think it's still I think this is gonna be Daniel Jones' best statistical year and they wow. could finish under five hundred. I mean, hell, he only had fifteen touchdowns last year. Sure. It <laughs> exactly. better be it's not hard to beat. that. Yeah, but I but it's gonna be bad whenever the team as a whole regresses. Yeah. Who's their who's their backup? They signed someone, but I don't remember who. I, I couldn't tell you who it was. He's going to get hurt at some point. No doubt about it. Uh, okay, who's got number two? Number two. I mean, it's obvious. It's the Cowboys. I mean, I th- but uh, but uh, honestly, I'm not sure how obvious it is, to be honest. I, I think they, they finished 12-5, and five, and I think they it, it comes down to the battles with the Eagles on who wins this division. I think whoever comes out on top in those games wins this division. In this case, I have it, the Eagles winning those, obviously. But here we're talking about the Cowboys. Um, I think Dak Prescott, Josh, here's the question. He has the best offensive, obvi- uh, arguably, receiving trio in the league i mean would you would you argue with that uh yeah i think that probably jamar chase t higgins and yeah tyler boyd are the best three is the okay. best wide receiver room in the i league. don't even think it's really close nfc then huh nfc then yeah I'd, i mean i'd have to look at it but yeah i mean there's definitely a strong wide receiver room now that you have cd lane michael gallup and brandon cooks i think that helps so, stack a lot hopefully I, yeah. I mean, to me, one of the reasons I think the Cowboys are going to end up second here, at probably like 11 and six is where I have them. I, I think that it's going to be because of the defense. I think Micah Parsons wins. It's, I'll talk about that later. I think Micah Parsons is going to have a very good year on defense. I think he's going to just continue to be a massive disruptor. I think that uh, Trayvon Diggs is going to have a spectacular year in the in the 
in the secondary. I think this can be a wonderfully ran defense. I still have questions about the offense, but at the end of the day, Dak's been a top 10 fancy quarterback pretty much throughout his entire career with a couple of outliers where he didn't finish the whole season or injury. I've, I don't see any reason why the offense isn't good. I think this team is going to be able to score points. Once again, I think the Cowboys are probably going to have a pretty good regular season. Then they're just going to choke when it gets to the playoffs. I yeah, and agree. I mean, going on more on the defense, you uh, they added Stephon Gilmore too on the other yeah. side, so that should help out. Um, ultimately, for me, it comes down to is Dak going to turn the ball over? Because I think that lost them several games last year, and if it's the same trend this year, then I don't see why they would end up being the number one team. The only thing that kind of scares me about not having them number one is that this division has not had a back-to-back winner since 2004. Okay, so it's a different winner every single year. The Eagles did it for like four years in the early 2000s. Um, And so kind of leading into who my number one pick is, it's the Eagles. And I do think that that trend is going to break and that they do end up winning the division again, uh, back to back. And um, but I mean, I just think their roster is ultimately the best one in the league. Um, And I or not in the league, in the division. But um, and it's really not close to me. I mean, they're stacked at every single unit that there is. Um, and then honestly, I just think Jalen Hurts protects the ball way better than Dak Prescott. Now, the way you said that they're they're stacked at every unit. So like, and not not, not that they're stacked at every position. They're stacked at the, at the linebacker unit. They're stacked yep. at the at the line unit. Like it doesn't matter what position we're talking about. If we're talking about a defensive line, we're talking about a defensive end, we're talking about a defensive tackle. We're stacked in this unit Mm -hmm. and the Eagles are. Yeah. Yeah. The Eagles, I mean, it's one of the most complete football teams uh, that we've seen right now in the NFL. I mean, this is another team that could argue, you know, the three best pass catchers on one team, you know, not including the third wide receiver, but when you look at AJ Brown, Devonta Smith and Dallas Goddard, you have three very capable people on offense. Then you add in Rashad Penny, DeAndre Swift, who's going to be a two-headed monster, not to even mention that you still have Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott, who are very familiar with the offense and can run if either one of those guys get injured. Because a lot of people say that it is the most injury-prone uh, duo of running backs between DeAndre Swift and Rashad Penny. But those two are very competent running backs, and someone's going to get the touchdowns there. Where, that's where Jalen Hurts probably comes in. This offense is going to excel. The defense is still going to be very good. One of the best uh offensive lines in the league whenever jason kelsey isn't starting fights with uh colts players he's very good at what he does um although you know one of the top moments of last year was or two years ago was watching malcolm rodriguez hip toss him right onto his back great move for the rookie Uh, that's part of what he's what he's really good at though starting fights with with the colts just the starting fights. so do you think there's any chance that they take a step back um offensively without shane steichen you know, I, I think it's a possibility, but at the same time, I think that they're going to be just fine. Jalen Hurts getting getting that time with him and then kind of, you know, integrating the offense. I think the offense is still going to be just fine. I think that you're probably going to see some things kind of change, maybe like the way that they run fourth and one or maybe the way that had the number of times they run the ball, things like that, now that they have a, a more of a dynamic duo back there. And you might see less uh, – choreographed quarterback runs from Jalen Hurts. Um, Sirion is calling the place. I'm not sure, but there's not a camera he doesn't love. That's, that's I think he would be running them. That would make a lot of sense. All right. Yeah, like that's that. how I've got the uh, the NF, NFC East shaken out. So once again, that is... We're in lockstep. Uh, yeah, this is a nice agreement. Um, we had Commanders at four, Giants at three, Cowboys at two, Eagles at one. Love it. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get to, do we want to do uh, college football first or do we want to do the uh, regular season awards? I think we Uh, end on regular season awards. Okay. So let's go to college football this weekend, whole slate of games. So everyone loves a good tune-up game, and I feel like that's exactly what this week is. I didn't see any just blockbuster matchups. It looks like a uh, a lot of opportunities for some of these powerhouses to go in and get some wins, like Michigan playing East Carolina. That's going to be a 40-point win. Tennessee, Virginia is going to be fun at 11 a.m. on on Saturday. Arkansas State and OU. OU should win that game by three touchdowns. 
They won't though. Iowa, Utah State. That's gonna be a <laughs> that's gonna be a tough game. That's gonna be a grinded out game. What's the spread on that? I'm I'm pulling it up right now, looking at half Fandle. a point. Oh, 25. 25. Are you serious? <laughs> it's Utah State, not Utah. Iowa, bro, Iowa didn't didn't score 25 points that's, all season last year. That's a good year. point. That's a good point. But it's still Utah State. And Iowa is supposed to be good. Like, this, like yeah. they're supposed I mean, to be good. All right. uh, Honestly, more than anything, I'm just excited to see how the Big 12 – yeah. Um, teams are playing honestly i think there's a lot of hype going into um especially texas you know and i i'm just curious to see if it's if they're going to live up to the hype when you were i mean rice coming into town it's going to be really fun it's going to obviously two thirty. they're going to have the prime time spot on fox uh it's going to be fun to watch gus johnson probably going to be calling that i think if he's still at fox uh he's definitely going to be on the call there um battle Austin, bat, battle for the name of miami no that is true uh, winner gets to keep the name. Loser has to change the name of the city. Is what I've heard is the uh, is what's going around on a petition. Mm-hmm. So Miami, Florida, or Miami, Ohio. Nevada, was... USC. Uh, hit the over on that, and forget about uh, it because you won't be able to watch it because it's on the fucking Pac-12 network. He's that pissed. spread that spread for Oklahoma and Arkansas well, State. Uh, plus uh, Josh. I'm not going to stop on this. It's the fucking Heisman. <laughs> it's the number one pick, and we and nobody in the country can watch him. Hey, let's talk about it. Do you think he's going to win Heisman again this yes. year? Yes. So and you think he's going one. back to back? And go number one. You know the last time there was a back to back Heisman winner? When's that? 1974 and 75. Well, is it going to be fucking Bo Nix? No. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Who's it going to be? <laughs> I don't know. You be. tell me. Bo Nix might win it. I he, he's could in be the Drake conversation. May. Drake, Drake could be May. Marvin Marvin Harrison Jr. If Marvin Harrison Jr. has a season, that, a that'd, be, that'd be incredible. He's and I've heard from people from Ohio say that he's one of the best talents to ever walk walk on that campus. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm excited to see him in, in the pros. Uh, Alabama with the tune-up game, obviously Middle Tennessee. Uh, anything else? Anything? Any, anything pop off the screen to you guys? Uh, oh. Sunday there's games mm. as well, and it's oh, cool. LSU Florida State five and eight. Oh shit, that's, that's what I'm looking forward game. to. Yeah, that's yeah. the best game. Yep, no, I am looking forward to that one. Um, other oh. than that, no, I mean it's just it's a bunch of tune-up games this week. Besides that, um, and so really next week you kind of just little look ahead for that. Um, Texas Alabama, looking forward to that mm. one. What what I'm but, gonna look for on Monday is that Clemson Duke game. I'm gonna re- really we're gonna really see if Cle- if Clemson's back. If Clemson is back to their winning ways, if if Dabo has that has that program back to where back to where he needs them at. Got the quarterback in from I know they had it. He's a transfer from somewhere. Um, I, we'll see we'll see what Dabo's got with a, a really highly touted Clemson team against the Duke team that's gonna be frisky. And the spread's only 12 and a half. It's going to be a frisky Duke team on on ESPN at 7 o'clock at Duke. That Texas-Alabama game is uh, plus and minus six and a half as well right now. I'm mean, Boys, we're right in the thick of football. I, I love the college football talk. This is a bunch of tune-up games this week. It should be a lot of blowouts. Dude. But that does mean that, that we are primed for a couple of upset picks this weekend. So I'm going to do some of my homework and see if I can't find some for socials throughout the week and post a uh, one or two sleeper upset picks for college football. Speaking of sleeper, something I can't wait. I hate the sleeper app, by the way. But speaking of sleeper, I uh, uh, I know, you, Griffin, you you kind of made I, – I hate the sleeper app. I'll go on, what? I'll go, on, I'll go on a rant if you want me to. It's, this man I, I – oh, hold on. Before, That's the this go-to man, fantasy app. This bud. man prefers ESPN, the oh, app that crashes. Yep. Bro, I can't even figure out where – I'm not even gonna get into it. I get lost. I'm in, in sleeper a twice one a day. league on ESPN, and I hate it. I get lost in sleeper twice a day. Anyways, a real sleeper is Northwestern versus Rutgers, meaning that I will be taking a nap during that game. It's gonna be the perfect <laughs> game to nap during. Uh, it's gonna be nine to twelve, if I had to guess, nine to tw- twenty-one to sixteen, something weird, and it's gonna be a really fun game to watch the end of after a nap. All right, big nap guy. Love naps on a Sunday. 
Um, okay, I think that's all for college football. So let's get into it. What everyone's been waiting for: NFL regular season award predictions. I'm ready for them. I want to hear what you guys have. We're going to hit some of the the big ones here, and I'm going to uh, pull up on FanDuel so I can see what the yeah, uh, I'm going odds strictly, are for some I'm, of these picks. I'm going strictly on bets I have in place. So I put in some bets about four weeks ago. That Okay, let's go ahead and start. We'll, we'll save that one. We'll start towards down here at the bottom a we little bit. With... Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, NFL Comeback Player of the Year. That's it's a lock. It's Demar Hamlin. He's yeah, minus two. I mean, yeah. I mean, he did die and come back, so he probably does deserve the award. Um, but I know this is going to sound heartless, but is he even that good? It's because NFL writers would vote on this. That was a that was a crazy statement. But it's it's because NFL writers. <laughs> I'm vote just on saying. This. <laughs> they love it. They let's, love. A good let's be statement. honest about it. Yeah. Uh, John Mechie is uh, if depending on who has the better year, though, he didn't die. But if Mechie has a pretty good year coming back from lymphoma, what about Lamar? That's pretty good. Uh, Lamar's plus 2,500. No way. Uh, Tua with a hand cramp, he has a chance. But I think Demar Hanlon is a lot. Ooh. You know who might? I'm sorry. With the new team, Trey Lance. Hmm. What oh, you say, Griffin? getting <laughs> Oh, we didn't even talk about that when we were talking about the Cowboys. My thing is, well, it's not a difference maker. No. Yeah, but it's news. It's and... a difference maker to the Lance family. Yeah, like what? <laughs> I mean, he's a QB4 no, behind honestly, Will though, Can we talk about the fact that Russell Wilson is on? Like, he has the third best odds to win comeback player of the year just for oh. being ass last year. Uh, he does not have the third best odds. Yes, he does. That's what Vegas Insider has. Oh, I mean, Plus, I guess technically, yes. What do you mean technically? It's he's tied <laughs> at third. Like he's no, it's one, literally two, three, uh, four, five, fifth on the list. I've got him number three, bro. I don't know. Just Vegas five. Insider has him at number three by himself, and that is ridiculous because what's he coming back from? I'm sorry, you yeah. had a terrible season. Well, that's the thing. He's coming back from a bad season. If he wins Dude, MVP, who gives? Who cares? He's not going to win MVP. But if he did, you There's would say even... that he didn't deserve the award? No. I mean, you're probably right. DeMar Hanlon you died on in... the field. But... Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> like, he at least came back. Yeah, from the dead. Um, all right. NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year. What about Coach? I'm, go- I'm going up my list. Okay. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Who wants to start? I'll, I'll go. Uh, it's Jalen Carter. Plus, I got a plus 900. Ooh, I actually agree field. with that. I have uh, Jalen Carter as well. I think he's a monster all year all year mm -hmm. long. I think he's in the perfect system for him. Yeah, and I mean the thing is, is if he comes in and is anything that he was at uh, Georgia, he's going to step right in, and I mean he's going to make an impact right away. I think that I I almost went with Will Anderson here, which is the safe pick. I feel like, but he's going to get a lot more attention just because their offensive line or defensive line is not as stacked as the the eagles is you can't afford to give jalen carter extra attention right josh you got i'm gonna take will anderson i'm gonna take the the favorite here i'm gonna take him at plus 400 i think that what's gonna make the bigger difference is i think that there's a chance jalen carter kind of blends into a team that is already really good on defense and if will anderson shines and he has a lot of big moments coming out I think that he could make a big opportunity to, or he has a good chance to make those opportunities matter when it comes to the the spotlight because this defense is not good. So if he's a, a shining part of this defense, I think it boosts him to where he's going to get that defensive player of the year. I like that. I like that. Yep. Yep. That's right. definitely fair. NFL offensive rookie of the year. I'll start with a hot take here. It's so I did, I don't have a strong, a strong take about this, about this, a word, so I'll start. I'll, I'll have I'll have a hot one. I think it's going to be Anthony Anthony Richardson. So I don't think Bijan Robinson has a great year. I don't think he has a bad year, but I don't think it's fantastic. I think Anthony Richardson rebounds the Colts enough, rebounds them to to a a franchise that that's looked at as as respectable, reputable, and I think it's enough for him for the for the riders for the voters to write to for him to win. Offensive rookie of the year. So I'm not saying that I I hate the pick or anything like that. 
Uh, but I just will share the preseason stats of Anthony Richardson, and then I'll move on to let Griffin say it. Uh, he went 13 of 29 for 145 yards and one interception. Great. He got, he got, he, he <laughs> so, fell with his yeah, so what, what he saying. he went with the option of like setting the bar low, so that mm-hmm. when you outperform, it makes you look really good. Preseason is so it, it doesn't matter. So I mean, it's it's Bijan Robinson, honestly. Yeah, and I don't think, I mean, he's going into an offense that loves to run the ball. Even when they were trailing, they still love to run the ball. He's obviously a great pass catcher coming out of the backfield. Um, honestly, I would not. Nah, I'm not going to go there. But anyway, I think that, I mean, it's just he's one of the best prospect running backs coming out in the most re- yeah. like the last decade. And so the thing is, is he's just, I mean, he, honestly, I, okay, I will say he might be top five candidate for offensive player of the year. Wow. As a rookie because of the usage. Like I'm not, I, I bet he don't. I'm not going to guarantee. I okay, that's <laughs> fair, plus, but at the same plus, time, I mean, I just 3, think his usage rate is going to be crazy with Atlanta, and I think they're going to really highlight him in their offensive system. And on top of that, I mean, it's kind of um, history tells us that rookie running backs tend to have more of an impact than any other position as a rookie um, coming into the league. So, plus, so I stand with it. Plus thirty five hundred to win offensive play of the year. Man, it's not too bad. I'm also all in on Bijan for rookie money. year, just for what you just said. And he's also plus 300 for rookie uh, mm-hmm. offensive player of the year, which I feel like is free money. So go ahead and lock that bet in at plus 300. Uh, like I said earlier, 539 rushing attempts for a team that doesn't care if they're behind or winning. They're going to run the football. Dan Campbell's going to run it down your throat. Bijan's going to get every opportunity. Such a wild prospect. All in on Bijan taking home uh, offensive rookie of the year. Now let's go to the AP NFL Coach of the Year. Okay, you're just going all over the place. I'm just going up the list. It's Dan middle. Campbell. Okay, uh, he is Dan the Campbell. favorite. He is the favorite at plus is 1,000. He? I got him at Perfect. plus 850. Hey. Well, I got better odds for you. You make more money on FanDuel. People love the Lions. That's so, all I got to say. Okay, well, so I'm going to I'm gonna go with the person I have at second place, second odds here. And I think to me it makes a ton of sense because I think that this team is going to have a better year than they had last year. And I'm going to go with Sean Payton. I think that he's going to help Russell Wilson look like a little bit more of the Russell Wilson from old. You've got a lot of pass catchers, you've got a lot of opportunity. Defense is really good. I think that Sean Payton is one of the best uh, NFL coaches that we've seen in a long time. So I, I'm going to give him here. It's going to be his first year back. The Riders have a lot of reason to want to give Sean Payton this award. So I'm going Sean Payton Coach of the Year. Comments on that, Griff? Uh, yeah, I don't think you can be third place in your division and win off, uh, Coach of the Year. So that that transitions to my point, to, to my pick, I should say. Uh, I have Robert Salah. Robert Salah. Uh, I think uh, – uh, but, I mean, obviously, he has Aaron Rodgers. So I think that they could win 14 games. Or they like, could finish third in their division. But I think mm-hmm. uh, uh, him at plus 1,600 right now, where I'm seeing him at, um, that's really good odds. I think that's the best odds for Coach of the Year right now. Yeah, I just wonder how much he's going to get, how much his votes will get diluted because of all the weapons that he has. Well, he's still, somebody's still got to call the plays. I mean, he's not calling the plays. He might be. I no. don't know him. He better not. <laughs> he's a defensive coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, now we've got uh, NFL defensive player so, of the year. I want I want to start oh. with this. So I agree with you, Josh. So I, I, Mike Michael Parsons plus five hundred. But I'll ask this question. So we see what Michael. We see the the impact and the effect that he has on the defensive side of the ball, nonstop, just every single play. At all four downs. But these other guys, the Miles Garrett, the TJ Watt, the Nick Bosas, the Max Crosby's, Josh, they're breaking sack records. They're they're doing everything that the defensive linemen have never done before. So at what point that like what what differentiates these players from from who's the defensive player of the year and who's not? I mean, um, stats have a lot to do with it. I mean, how well the defense as a whole performs probably has a lot to do with it. Um, the leadership characteristics, 
I mean, the stats play a big part. I mean, if you're going out breaking a sack record, yeah, you know, you probably deserve the recognition of doing so with the award. But I think that Mike Parsons is going to put together a good enough year overall where he's going to be high enough in most categories in stats to be where you can't overlook him. I mean, I'm not saying that Miles Garrett, TJ Watt, Nick Bosa are not fantastic defensive players because they are. And any one of these guys on the list could, could win it. I just think that it's been the defensive – ends time and I think that it's going to transition this year into a, a linebacker when my, I think Michael Parsons is the best candidate because he plays such a good hybrid role of just being everywhere on the field at once. A linebacker that could just come off the edge at any time. And yeah so I have Miles Garrett winning this. Um, mm -hmm. He's coming off back-to-back -back 16 sack seasons and they also upgraded the defensive line with Sedaria Smith and Dalvin Tomlinson coming in. And so there's going to be less focus on like, you can't, you're not going to be able to double him just every single time anymore. Um, and the thing that kind of scares me about Micah Parsons is over the last, like, I think it was like last five or six games to end the season. He only had one and a half sacks after starting off with 10 sacks, you know, so that, I mean, he clearly showed fatigue um, and that could be just because he was a rookie, not used to, I mean, it's kind of a the rookie wall. So, so I, I, I will so. say what I think actually contributed a little bit more was uh, the ins and outs of Dak Prescott's injury and having to deal with more of a different kind of offense where the ball's index turning the ball over so much where the defense is always out on the field. You're getting gas more than you usually would week in and week out. So I think that fatigue factor came into play a little bit towards the end of the season. That, that definitely could be the case, along with, I mean, again – rookies tend to hit that wall mid-season anyway so it's not like it I mean you could even with Dak not turning the ball over if he ever did do that um Less then he could baby. still have an argument yeah and that, there's no way <laughs> um but that's kind of where I'm coming from and I think I mean Miles Garrett's had a case at being the best defensive end in the league for quite some time now and I just think it's his time to um kind of get defense player of the year I love it. Miles Garrett was my pick last year. I mean, you can – these top four or five guys in the rankings, you you can pick any of them and draw their yeah. name out of a hat. Right. Kyler, who did you have? Uh, of defensive? Yeah. Oh, I started with Mike Parson. I agree. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, so, offensive, I'll start with that, though. I think it's going to be a race between who stays healthier, between Jamar Chase – and Justin Jefferson, um, I think whoever stays healthier, um, if any of them misses a week, um, they will they will lose in in the amount of yardage they have per for the season, and that will lose them the race. Um, but it's going to be between them. But if I had to pick, which I do have to here, I'm going to say Justin Jefferson. Um, I I agree. Even though that Justin Jefferson won it last year, it, you know it's hard for me to pick someone to win it back to back. But, I mean, he's sitting here at plus 1,400. You lose Adam Thielen. You get the rookie Jordan Addison. You get TJ Hawkinson, someone who else who's going to take the targets. You can't just triple team Justin Jefferson and expect the Vikings to not score points anymore or continuously because you couldn't do that before. So you're still not going to be able to triple team Jefferson and just, you know, think no one else is going to beat you. Kirk Cousins is still a very serviceable quarterback in the NFL. So I, I agree. I think that Justin Jefferson is just going to get the work. I think he's he, the most talented wide receiver in the league at this point, and I think he's going to make it happen. I think that there are going to be some – everything that Justin Jefferson does is under a microscope more than ever, and so the bad weeks will be highlighted a lot more than the good weeks. As much as Kirk's bad weeks are. Yeah, well, I think that those are going to go hand in hand. People are going to tie – Jefferson's bad weeks to some of the fact that Kirk Cousins had a bad week and how can you you know you're gonna have to overcome that if you want to be known as the you know the offensive player of the year so um I have Tyreek Hill here mm, I love 2,000 yards and, and, dude and I don't know I like I said before I don't know that he'll actually hit 2,000 yards but Mike McDaniels I think is going to use him in all kinds of packages this year and his yards after catch potential is just I mean, it's unmatched. And he put up over 1,700 yards last year, and Tua missed how many games? Six or seven? Eesh. I'm, I mean, I don't know. It, again, not saying he would have hit 2,000 yards last year or that he will this year, but you would expect him to up his game even more. And kind of what you said, you cannot, with having Jalen Waddle on the other side, you cannot double-team Tyreek. 
You know what you're getting right. for right now for uh, Offensive Player of the Year? Is it plus, plus 2,000? Plus 2,000. Yeah. Magical number, huh? That's free money. It's free money. Magical you heard number, it here first. 2,000. I mean, uh, is, I mean, do you think it's a lot like – do you think it's like realistic at all that he gets 2,000 yards? I mean, I think at some point somebody's going to do it. Um, with his, I mean, dude, with his yards after the catch potential, he definitely could. Do I think he really will? No, but he also doesn't miss games hardly ever in his whole career. He's not really missed games. I think he's missed one. I did hear a take from someone. I think it was our buddy Buck. He said that if Tyreek hits 2000 receive, or if he hits 2000 yards, the Dolphins won't have a winning record. Yeah. (laughs) Or he's gonna carry him to the Super Bowl. He's that, not going to. He's not I'd be to. like Allen Iverson bringing the Sixers to, to the uh, finals against the Lakers. Yeah, winning the first game. Okay, last award that we have to give out is the NFL regular season MVP. And I'm gonna start this off by saying, I think that this should. I think they should change the name. I think it should just be, you know, name it after a quarterback and call it the quarterback 2020 whatever award. I think it should because be like the, the Lamar Jackson trophy. Yeah, I mean, just something <laughs> like that. Like, because it, it's not the MVP anymore. Like, it's not the most valuable player on these teams. That that's not who wins it. It's the storyline. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but like, if you want to talk about most important players on a team, like Justin Jefferson on the Vikings is the most what do you important want to talk player about, on the would, team. You would talk about removing the king and queen from England next, Josh. What do you want to talk about? I would just like to, if you're going to call it the MVP, I have the same argument with the with the NBA. If you're going to call it the MVP, make it go to the MVP, not just a single position in the league. Or if, like, if they're a king, why do they have a parliament? I, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it's the same question. Okay, NFL regular season MVP. Uh, obviously, I, I'll go first. Not, I mean, this one's obvious for me. It's going to be Lamar Jackson plus 1,600. There's your free money. Go and go and get it now. Lamar has a whole lot to prove. He's got a lot of chips on his shoulder right now from the contract talk, and he's going to be in a new high-powered offense where they're, uh, they've are they already run, statistically, they've already run more three wide receiver sets in preseason than they did all of last year when you look at it per game basis. So the, te- the team's obviously going to want to spread the ball out. They want to make the – they want to go fast pace. Want to up the tempo. We're going to get those runs in. J.K. Dobbins is back. Gus Edwards is still here. We've got more weapons, even though I I hate how everyone talks about how deep the wide receiver room is because it's not really that deep. But I think Lamar is going to come out with a lot to prove, and I'd be scared to death if I was any team in the AFC. What you said just there, I did get him at plus 1,800, so I'm a little excited about that. Uh, What you did say there is that he has something to prove, and I think he does have something to prove. Um, Getting all of that money, he has something to prove to all the haters. That we're saying he doesn't deserve all this money. They shouldn't pay him all this money. They should let him walk. Should let him sit out this year if he wants to. Should let him lose all this money. He's going. He's hearing all that. He's reading all the tweets. I think he's going to have one of the best years we've ever seen from an NFL player. Hmm. Well, you guys are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, <Williams>. uh, <laughs> it is. Yeah, let's go it original. <laughs> it is. He's going back to back, and I, damn it, I was actually gonna um just say my pick with putting him on my background, but I couldn't figure it out. But Boomer. no, I mean it's Patrick Mahomes. He's, he's the what I saved it somewhere. I don't know. He's he's the best quarterback in the league. Uh, he's gonna put up crazy numbers no matter who he has receiving for him. And honestly, they're probably gonna be the number one seed in the AFC again this year. Um and. You know, ultimately, they're going to be back um, in the Arrowhead Invitational, per usual. And if just, we get to change the name the of the best. Super Bowl, then we definitely get to change the name of the oh, that was MVP. No, that was actually the AFC Championship game. If we get to change to. the name of the AFC Championship game, then we definitely get to change the name of the MVP award. Yeah, I don't know what you're on. Yeah. About. Whoever wins MVP this year, that's who we're naming it after because it's going to be a quarterback. No, you, you just want the trophy. So to be you're named saying for LeBron? If you're, <laughs> you say LeBron? I mean, yeah, that's what he wants. Well, he's he's gotten he's gotten snubbed a lot when it comes to the MVP. That is facts. Maybe, but, 
what are the chances Travis Kelsey wins Offensive Player of the Year? I mean, it's plus four thousand. But if I mean, if, if Patrick Mahomes has such an outstanding year at the as the MVP, what if they go? What if they sweep it? That'd be awesome. You they should, could. You should parlay that. That'd be crazy. Uh, I will let you guys know on the three leg parlay I put in. Uh, I placed it on July sixteenth. Justin Jefferson, Offensive Player of the Year, Lamar Jackson, MVP, and Micah Parsons, Defensive Player of the Year, was plus money. One hundred seventy nine thousand dollars and or plus one seventy nine nine hundred. Sorry, <laughs> plus one seventy nine nine hundred. I bet sixty one cents, and if I if it hits, it'll pay me eleven hundred. All right. So not not too bad of a bet if I say so <laughs> myself. I would. I roller. Government. Government. It was. Uh, it was all the money I had left on my uh, <laughs> sixty on my cents? on my Fanduel account. After you I went placed, bought ramen noodles so after, you could eat. Bro, with buy inflation, you can't buy ramen noodles for 61 cents. Yeah, these this economy's tough out here, boys. If you get stit to pass, like, you that's just why you got a home. sports bet. That's right. I get a sports bet to feed my family. <laughs> 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 oh boys. All right. Fantastic episode. A lot of football. A lot episode. of football. A lot of football. Looking forward to watching college football this weekend. Next week, next or this Thursday is our Bursher Bubble live draft. It'll be on Zoom Ooh, or on some platform week. that we choose. So we have our fantasy football draft. I helped Callie do a mock draft the other night that went very well for from his position. He was all Bro, in on the mock draft. We were on the porch, and that was I had some vitamins. You know, I, I, I enjoy it at night. And Josh is trying to make me do this mock draft, and I am just bro. It's it's going literally like. Bro, t- put it on auto pick on the on the second pick. Like we need to get out of here, get out of sleeper. I was all in on sleeper. Um. Also, before we get out of here, I, I didn't say this at the beginning. I did have my uh, golf tournament uh, today that I played in, and I, I was on the news channel six. The there was a guy at the green who was recording with his phone, and I didn't know. I didn't really know who it was. I just thought it was like somebody who worked at the tournament. We're about 40, 50 feet out. You know meters out yards out you know, it's the most far. scripted thing meters. you've ever seen in your life <laughs> meters it's, it's the most you know how most... you're measuring meters <laughs> he shot it he, he changed the he changed his range thing to, to meters instead of yards and uh you know i just got that chip in and went, hit hit the green rolled right into the pin i gave a big caw caw because it many, was an eagle how many tries did it take eagle. you to how many tries did it take you to get the ball close enough to look to make it look like an eagle it was just in the one time, and the guy recorded no it, shot. Put it, put it on the news. The guy said, uh, hey, what's your name? I said, Josh Owen. <laughs> and then on the news report, someone you sent me the said, video earlier. co-host of BYB. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to tag it whenever I find it. They said, uh, <laughs> they said, well, he did look excited when he made that eagle. And then John Holcomb, the guy recorded, goes, well, wouldn't you? He said, they're really excited because they parred hole one, and they needed an eagle to go two under through two. So that was a big hole. That was a big moment for this young man named Josh Owen. So, you know, good day for me okay. at the Scott Carter right. golf tournament, raising money for uh, to fund research on childhood cancer. And I did beat you by uh, a lot of strokes the day before. At least, and, at, least, at least six. That's nothing to brag about, Kyler. At least and six. Before I get out of here, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it. If you see behind me, it's kind of hard to see. But this is my board, my 100-kilometer board. I'm selling squares, one through 100. I've already sold, uh, I think, 12 of them. All you have to do, if you want the two, if you want the square number two, represents the second kilometer of my race that I'm running, running 100k on October 21st. We're raising money for a friend's mom who still has or who is battling colon cancer. She's on the come up, but she got maintenance chemo. We're trying to raise money for her, so you can purchase a square. The number two square is two dollars. The number twelve square is twelve dollars. Be more than happy to send you my cash app or my Venmo. Let me know what square you want. Uh, I've already sold $100 to one of our sponsors on the pod, sponsored me running, Bigfoot Axe Throwing. Shout out Bigfoot Axe Throwing and all of our partners like Ho- live, like Hocha Time, living on Hocha Time all the time. Boys, this has been a fantastic episode. Lately, Hocha Time for me is when I'm doing these episodes with you. Thank you so much for another fun-filled episode. We will see you on Thursday for the draft. Best of luck.